Wow, guys, I gotta tell you, I think they're gonna sell a lot of these things. Hello everyone and welcome back to AmmoMart.com. I'm very excited to be with you today and we're gonna do something that we don't do a lot of, which is our product review. One of the hot new pistols on the market within the last few weeks is the Springfield Armory Echelon. Now, Springfield Armory's made pistols for ages, and of course going back to the HS2000, which later became the Springfield Armory XD series, which was an M, S, and all kinds of other letters that I can't get into right now because I don't remember them. They had a fairly successful run. Some people really enjoyed that product, some people didn't. I was kind of in the middle, so I'm hoping that actually, actually helps me evaluate their new offering called the Echelon. So, not wasting any more time, let's open it up and see what we have. Before we go any farther, I'd like to remind everybody that I don't get paid by Springfield Armory and they did not send this to me. This is provided to the channel by a good friend of mine, Mark Neubauer, who bought the pistol. And one of the reasons I got interested in it was he is a straight old school steel revolver guy from way back or 1911. Prior to the Echelon, not a fan of striker fired pistols. So I want to see what got him so cranked up. Anyway, of course you have your cardboard box. I would have preferred something a little more sturdy, but you guys that are familiar with the channel already know that. And I'm going to assume that in this little pouch here would be the Echelon. It is a nice little carry pouch though, I must tell you. Nylon with, a, with of course their logo. And here it comes with a chamber flag. Just for a second, I'm gonna set this aside so we can look at what else is in the pouch. And of course you have what appears to be two more 17 round magazines. And if we continue to open this up, what you have is of course your product registration and I'm gonna guess you get your warranty out of there. And cable lock, whatever that was. I'll pick him up in a second. Mag loader, an additional magazine. This one says 17 with the bumper, which I'm assuming takes it to at least 20 perhaps. More on that in a second. And oh, I know what just hit the floor. We'll talk about him in a second and some back straps that are actually not clearly labeled as related to their size. I'm assuming that medium comes on the pistol as is pretty customary and one of these would be small and then large. But it is nice to have that change if your hand's not quite the right shape. And now oh, this is a nice little feature here, which is an additional bumper for one of the other magazines. And it looks like it would have the capacity to increase your round count by two. And it even has a two stamped on the inside of the bumper. So it's a nice feature there. I love that concept of the extended mag. And this one significantly even comes stiffly. That's kind of cool. And then, of course, you have your proof of accuracy and function. Nobody really does that anymore. I kind of like this. If you shoot better than this, you feel good. If you don't, it's something to aspire to. Kind of cool. And that, of course, empties the box. Now, if you don't mind, I'm going to go chase down what hit the floor. It's going to become very important in a second. So I'm back. Let's just start with the general outline of the pistol. It is a four and a half inch barrel. And you'll notice, unlike their XD series, does not have a grip safety. I'm a fan of no grip safety. And of course, it does come MOS ready. And I think the way that Springfield Armory is really going to hit a home run with this pistol is related to that guy right there. But more on that in a little bit. As I kind of rotate the gun around, I want to double make sure it's clear. You have stippling all over the place. You got some above the traditional handle where your thumbs would ride, also on the back, and some right here for what some people call a gas pedal. This is a little bit of a flare or a bump out, which is a nice kind of grip feature. And even one, if you can see this, on the back plate. So that's kind of cool because that would kind of be locked up with more of a custom gun and even the ambi mag releases, which is another nice feature of the pistol. Being wrong-handed, you guys know how important that is to me. 
that actually has some gription on it as well. Gription is a real word, look it up. So, back to being ambidextrous, we have your slide locks and releases on both sides. Just from initial evaluation, I can tell you that it seems to be a bit small. I haven't tried to work the gun, so that might be an asset or it might not be. In my humble opinion, small, I'm not typically a fan of, but let's see how it goes. The pistol has a very good feel initially on your first grade, your first purchase of it. It has basically a 1911 angle grip and is quite ergonomic. It is undercut trigger guard, and if I can get a good close-up of this perhaps, it even has some stippling underneath the trigger guard. Now, that also could be an asset or a detriment because after repetitive shooting, this might get to be, if you can see this action real quick here, a bit of a friction point on your support hand. Maybe it won't be, it's not super aggressive, but it's aggressive enough to get a grip on. So that maybe it won't ever become a factor, but it could be. Also, of course, you have your rail underneath for a flashlight or whatever. This one seems to be longer than most, which is kind of handy. It should accommodate more lights easier. You guys know if you have a, like a smaller or mid-sized micro pistol, sometimes that can be a challenge to find the light that works well. Also, interestingly enough, as we start to look at the slide, the slide serrations are quite deep, very aggressive. They almost look like they're sort of cut, but they're not. You have them in the front and you have them in the rear. And I've noticed right away, this little flare right here would make the pistol easy for chamber checks or press checks either from the rear or from the front because you have things to get a hold of. It's almost lending itself to be a sort of a custom-ish gun. Now, whether it shoots like one, we'll have to see. Related to the sights, I'm going to try to hold this up in the line of the camera, you have what those are familiar with the Hellcat are used to, which is kind of this U sort of sight system. I'm a fan of it. A lot of people, not so much. You have to keep in mind that this was designed and marketed as a full size duty pistol. So it's not a target gun. It's not designed to have very small front sights, adjustable front and rear. That's not what this guy is for. It's definitely a full size duty gun or an excellent from the exterior anyway, home defense gun, and you could perhaps even throw it in your vehicle if it was in the right sort of position not to be noticed. I know a lot of people aren't a fan of that. If you are at this price point, that might be a way for you to go. Now, related to the price point, what is it? Well, MSRP on this pistol is $675. You could reasonably expect to pay, oh, I don't know, depending on where your shop, six and a quarter, perhaps as high as $650 because it's new. But right now, that's pretty much dependent on where you shop. Worst case would be 675. Of all the research I've done, the first pictures or availability of this came out around July the 12th. So she hasn't been out on the market very long at all. And I think people so far are gonna like it. And from the initial sort of feedback I get, very, very, very well received. Now, Back to the operating system of the gun, I'm gonna to try to flip it around. And if you can see on both sides, right here, I'm gonna put my finger above it, and there's another one on the other side, right here, is actually the serialized part of the firearm, okay? This is called the central operating group. Now, according to the ATF, as I said, this is the firearm. Now, what I'm telling you is, this gun is truly modular, much like the SIG 320, in that you can pull out the fire control system or box or with a cog, as they call it, and you could put this potentially in a different sized lower. Maybe they'll come out with a different color lower. That's not known to me right now, but you can tell that Springfield Armory is already planning for the future. This is a really cool thing that they did, and I think other manufacturers are going to get online and do lockstep with this sort of thing, why wouldn't you? Now, back to the MOS cut. As you can tell, when I threw some things on the floor, this actually comes with a set of pins. This is pin set two, pin set three. 
And what Springfield Armory is trying to accomplish is make it easier for you to mount an optic directly to the slide. This is called the VIZ or the Variable Integration System. And when I remove this, and I'll show it on camera later, I don't want to remove it now, what you're going to have is a bunch of indents or places to put these pins depending on the optic that you buy. That's a really nice feature because people that are into red dots as I am can tell you firsthand what a challenge it is to get one that fits that doesn't stick up two feet from the top of the slide. Anytime that you can hook the optic directly to the slide and give it a lower profile, it's more in line with the bore axis of the gun, consequently easier to shoot and easier to present onto the target. I haven't had a chance obviously to see how all of this would work, but they claim that this would accommodate the top 30 most popular optics on the market today. And for instance, this pin set three is for the shield. Pin set two says Delta Point Pro EFLX. And I'm assuming that all through here, you would find more and more pin sets based on the optic that you have. So let's try to tear this guy apart and see what we have inside. While you were away, I field stripped the echelon as you would typically do for cleaning and maintenance. It has a very, very common takedown procedure. And one thing to note is you do not have to pull the trigger to field strip, which I think is a nice feature, especially related to safety after a long range day. Once again, you do not have to pull the trigger. Now you can sort of see what we were referring to here with all of this trigger bar and linkage kind of that goes in the frame like a horseshoe. This would be your central operating group or the serialized portion of the firearm. This is significant here in that it has a fairly wide locking block, even though, whoops, looking at it right here, it appears to be steel or metal inserted into the plastic, very common. And just from looking at it, it has a very robust appearance. For instance, especially your springs. I'm used to say canic firearms, and once you take or field strip down the rival, things seem to be pretty dainty, almost petite inside. Guns held up very well, but if you look at the echelon, it just seems to be quite a bit beefier, which you would think would lend itself to a ton of longevity. You have your guide rod and spring. The guide rod is plastic, but stippled on the end. And single spring design. No more spring inside of a spring, at least for this guy. And your barrel. I would have to research what steel the barrel is actually made out of, but very robust locking lug. Definitely designed for a lifetime of use. And the machining on the slide seems to be quite clean. So, of course, you would expect that from Springfield Armory, a company with their reputation. None of that's a surprise, but just from the looks of things and even the finish on the gun, it appears to be well worth the asking price, at least up until the time we get on the range. So I'm going to put this guy back together and finish up the unboxing. Okay, so the weapon's been reassembled. What I'm going to do is see how well the slide locks and release work even though they're quite small, that was easy. Now what I'd like to do is insert a magazine into the weapon, which would be an empty magazine is typically your worst case scenario way to test whether these things work well or not. And they actually work quite well. Even though they don't stick out terribly far or are not very wide, they do provide you a nice little catch shelf here because they're not smooth. There's a nice sort of almost rough or sharp clearly defined edge that your thumb catches and it is actually quite nice. So surprise, surprise, even though small, they work quite, quite well. I am definitely what one would call a trigger snob. It's one of the main reasons why I love Canic firearms, particularly the rival. Um, I just like a good trigger. I think it can solve a lot of problems for people, provided that they understand that it can come at a cost, meaning some inadvertent discharges on the range until you learn the trigger extremely well. So light isn't always your friend. It can be kind of dangerous. What I like is short, not a lot of creep, and a crisp break. So let's see how the echelon measures up to all of that. So 
not a huge amount of take up. I would say it's pretty normal and it's, you know, very smooth, not clunky at all. Now we're going to on the wall. It has a very pronounced wall like that so far. I'm going to try to be still here. Wow. <laughs> That's actually very, very little creep and a very crisp break. So I'm going to reset the trigger. Of course, I've pinned it for this demonstration. So it has some more reset, obviously, than competition guns like the Rival, but that's an important distinction. This wasn't designed for that. This is definitely a duty gun or a home defense gun. So trigger reset, I would say, is well, well adequate, just not competition. Wow, guys, I got to tell you, I think they're going to sell a lot of these things. That is a trigger that is far superior to the Glock and in my opinion, far superior to the SIG 320 factory triggers. That is a very nice, well thought out trigger. Yeah. So I don't know. I can tell you this much so far. I can't attest to the fact of whether it's a true life safety tool or not because I haven't shot the gun. My instincts are that it will be and then some. Another instinct I have just from handling the gun is this is an extremely well thought out product that was designed to be way above average. You get a lot of features, a lot of sort of custom things that you would typically find on a much more expensive pistol. And I wonder if the target audience were people that didn't want to quite take the plunge, say into shadow systems, but wanted something that was an upgrade from a stock Glock or a stock 320. Just handling the gun, it seems as though maybe it's got a little Walter PDP in it, as well as Hellcat Pro. You can see a lot of those features that Springfield Armory also makes. And it's just a meld and a combination of a lot of cool stuff. And I'm very excited to shoot it. So far, I must tell you, straight A's across the board. There's nothing I've found about the pistol so far I don't like. And obviously the time will tell on the range, but so far, definitely, definitely a fan of the Echelon. Good gun.